Hey guys, this is Insurance and Finance live from the headquarter of Digital Scouting in Hamburg, Germany and we have an IBM Risk Concierge Special. You may ask um, what a Risk Concierge is, but before we go to that question, I would uh, introduce our guest of the day, Christian Beek, and I would ask him one private thing about him and one business topic. But before I do that, because I did not actually tell him to prepare anything, I will share, to be fair, two things about me. So, privately, I'm actually taking a gap year currently with my favorite Hamburg Sports Club because it drained me so emotionally all these defeats over the years that I, you know, say I need to take a break. And professionally, as you all guys know, we wrote this book. If you have not ordered it yet, please do. Uh, it's about attention hacking, social media and sales. and you know, we are preparing an English version too, so that should be out uh, in a few months. Christian, you have now 27 seconds time to actually prepare something about what do the people need to know privately about you and what are you actually doing at IBM? Okay, sure, Robin. Yeah, thanks. Um, let's start with, per, uh, with uh, professionally. So I've been doing this for a while. I've been writing research. And I love to talk about the research. So if you do want to talk with me about it, it's probably easiest to just contact me via LinkedIn. You'll find me under my name, Christian Beek. And I'm happy to answer questions or do presentations or whatever. Uh, something private, that's really a tough one uh, because I have a lot of interests. Um, I would say I'm a, how do you say, jack of all trades, master of none currently. Uh, my favorite thing to do is sing. So I'm actually taking singing lessons. Wow! And what is your favorite genre? I sing classical mainly, but also a cappella, uh, more in the jazz direction. Wow! My favorite music is country music. And do you know what you need for a great country song? Uh, well, I only know country is the music of pain, so you probably need a lot of pain. <laughs> no, you need, that's true. It's, you need three chords and the truth. Oh, okay. Right. And by okay. the way, your country fans don't get upset. I really love country music, uh, so that's another private information. But let's go to risk concierge. Um, what is it, and what does a concierge have to do with insurance? And do you have any examples you can actually share with us today? Yeah, sure. So the um, the concept of a risk concierge is really at the, the when you look at where insurance companies need to go to reach the customers of the future, the next gen customers. Um, it's being um, around and um, helping them around uh, get around risk much more than they are today. Today insurers uh, basically sell coverage. They are there when something happens, but that's not enough going forward. So if you imagine a concierge in a hotel of concierge, you go to him or her, you ask uh, what you can do for dinner um, or for the evening. They find out what you like. Do you want to actually go to dinner? Do you want to go to theater? What direction? What kind of music do you like? To get back to that question earlier. Um, and then the concierge helps you actually arrange it, make reservations, et cetera, et cetera. Well, risk concierge is something similar only in the context of risk. And because, they, I mean, there's, our life is full of risks and it's great if we had somebody to actually help us take care of the risk, not just after they have happened, but proactively. So, let's, so it's let's not that my it. insurer is now getting you me my ballet ticket. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if that's a viable um, offering, why not? But I mean, in principle, it's supposed to be around risk. So um, looking after the, the car and making an appointment to, uh, the, the, um, uh, to, to check up on the car that it's actually safe to drive or to check up on the health. So these kinds of appointments are something that are risk related and that could be part of the risk concierge service. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's something we have been advocating for also since several years to say insurers have two possibilities, two decisions to make or one decision to make. Do I want to be a risk carrier, a provider for, you know, um, a damage and, and manage that? Or do I want to be part of the daily lives of my clients, B2B, B2C, and actually help them? Imagine, you know, I get a WhatsApp message or a messenger that says, oh, your car is parked outside. I see a hailstorm coming. Uh, sincerely your favorite insurer. I mean, that's a bit, little, bit, little bit of different communication and service than me actually getting just, you know, letters with increase in premium and uh, no answer when I want to get a claim paid. 
Um, <laughs> so, um, do you have some examples that impressed you over the, and is there anybody who actually does it? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, uh, the the, f the full uh, package of risk concerts, that's that's something for the future that's not around. But I do have some examples where you can s kind of see where this is going and, and how you can go about it. Let's start really old school, old style. And that's, um, I'll just take myself as an example. I live in France. Uh, we have, in France, there's this, this actually fairly cool system of house insurance where house insurance includes a lot of extras for example liability is covered by a house it's not just the building it's the interior you can add on um, on um, legal uh, fee insurance and, and these types of things and then of course I have, I have an agent I live a little in a little village and basically he th this is this the old concept of risk concierge because the agent really takes care of everything for me now imagine you tack something on to actually make it more risk concierge. So uh, we have uh, uh, somebody who, who takes care of our central heating system and we have a contract with that man to, to um, come by when something happens. So if, if, there's a, if there's a leakage or if there's some kind of an issue there, he comes by, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service contract, a maintenance contract, but his time is included. So basically that's the risk element so if some, is, of course, we still have to pay for um, for the the uh, parts that that he replaces, but we don't have to pay for his time. That's part of the fee. Why not include that in the insurance? So that's I mean, it's it's a typical, and that sort of gets you in the direction where risk concierge could be going even with classical insurance. I really like that. I think, especially in PNC, but also in health insurance, that could be something. Why are we actually paying? You know, why are we paying the treatments uh, for sick? Why don't we help people to uh, stay healthy? I know there are a lot of programs out there, but it's probably mostly it's an add-on and super limited. And I think that's something uh, actually a paradigm shift um, uh, going yeah. on here. Um, yeah. You brought us some examples. Uh, tell me about snack. Yeah, snack is. Um... Um, well, all the examples that I brought are, are insure tech related, which should be pretty obvious since, I mean, when we'll be going into more detail, we'll be talking about technology a lot because, of course, technology needs to be at the at the, the center or at the foundation of how you reach next gen customer. Snack is an, is an insure tech in Singapore, uh, which allows people to do micro insurance. So it's um, it's. The, the, the parent company is called in, Income NCU, so it's called Snack by Income. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's daily insurance on a really cheap basis, which can build up over time. Everything is done via an app, which is very attractive to the young generation. Um, and um, the, so you, it adds up, you can yeah. save, there's life, there's, there's health, there's, um, there's PNC in there, and there's all sorts of perks uh, that you can add via various um, enterprises, various stores, etc., that are participating in this, in this ecosystem, in this network. So and it's, what does it do with concierge? Do they do things differently? Um, the, the concierge aspect is really coming through embedding this, these risk aspects into everyday life of the, the people that they interact with. So basically, it's insurance uh, and risk, help with risk without really noticing it, without being intrusive in your life, without you having to go somewhere and you have to sign a big contract. So it just, mm. it's just embedded in, in part of the life. That's, that's where the concierge aspect, uh, aspect comes in. All right, you brought also a second one. So everybody check out Snack, what they have been doing and also, you know, how they are doing these things, especially, you know, engraving yourself into, into you know, everyday experience. Yeah. It's super important, I think. And um, other examples, DriveWise. What's yeah, going on there? Allstate, uh, big incumbent, DriveWise has been around forever. The interesting part is there and, and um, in, at the core, it's not insurance. It's that DriveWise is about helping people drive safer. So it's basically helping them take care of that risk of driving. It's ri a risk mitigation measure. I've uh, talked to some people who actually have DriveWise. It's it's sort of a gamification of the whole thing too, because you can after the the drive, you can see ah oh, okay these are the scores. This is how well I actually drove, and you can compare this within your family. So it's it gets that should be interesting. Shout out to my. No, not going there. 
<laughs> so, but it gets into a real competition there. And the, I mean, the, the, um, it's not even, you don't even have to be a, an Allstate customer to, to actually sign yeah. up for Drive-Wise, which again, this is the, the concierge concept. Basically, it's helping people with risk, but not selling insurance. So that's, that's, we get, we're getting closer. And when I'm at uh, Allstate, uh, do I actually get a, a discount when I use DriveWise wisely? Um, I think you do. I'm not actually 100% sure. I don't want to tell, say anything wrong. Okay. Um, then let's go to the next example. So I think DriveWise is super interesting. Maybe, maybe for the two people not insurance watching right now. So car insurance is super, in some regions around the world, a super deficit uh, business. And we have combined ratios of 110, 102, 95, 98 percent. So when you're able to motivate your uh, clients to drive safer, to reduce uh, the amount of damages, you know, saving lives, saving wealth, but also, you know, saving your or reducing your combined ratio, it's a multi-billion dollar play. So this is something super hot nerdy. I could talk on for hours as Christian, but I don't. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. It's the Desjardins Roost. What's yes. What's going on with them? Okay, Desjardins is a Canadian insurance company, one of the uh, one of the large incumbents in Canada. Uh, Roost is a company who builds smart home devices. Um, actually, I think they count themselves as an insurtex too, because it's yeah. they're basically preventive maintenance devices. So the the one that you see on the screenshot there, um, that's something that de can detect water leaks. So this is real um, risk mitigation or risk prevention services here. Uh, Again, people could, uh, the, the, the offer is not in place anymore. I just found this, I find this example so fascinating that I had included anyway. So um, you could sign up for this. You got a Roost device. You signed up with, with Desjardins. You didn't actually need a, an uh, insurance co uh, um, contract with them again, but it basically, it helped you um, be safe in your own home by preventing um, water damage. There were several other alert services that, that uh, went in the same direction there. Uh, and it's, just, it's, a, it's a fascinating use of telematics to prevent um, damages, to mitigate risk. Again, the concierge concept, um, help the risk concierge helping the client, the customer manage their risk, mitigate their risk, just navigating their life in a better way because I mean, Let's be honest, we'd all rather have the accident not happen or the damage yeah, not totally. happen. And again, also uh, also for the two ins not insurance people here, uh, water damage is one of the biggest drivers of PNC damages, especially in, uh, in, in house insurance. So I think, uh, you know, if we, it's a major driver, costs billions and billions and billions of dollars around the world. So to reduce that, you know, is more environment friendly. You don't need to, you know, to repair, uh, repair something. You actually you can keep the this this stuff saves a lot of money, hassle, and I think it's a total difference in, you know, do, how do I actually manage the claims that are coming in, or how can we actually reduce uh, claims by helping people? I mean, it's like you know, a win 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 situation. So interesting yeah. uh, move. And by the way, IoT. I think we're just at the beginning here. Also, if you think about, can we combine this with, you know, some NFT crypto thing, blockchain ecosystem, super interesting. Again, another topic we could fill a whole conference with, but I don't. Um, because actually Christian um, built or did a, a large study for IBM on risk concierge, and you found out some interesting facts um, about insurers that actually use or try to be risk concierge and those uh, who are not. Um, what are your most favorite numbers from your study? Um, my favorite numbers are, I'll, I'll surprise you with one, I know you read the study. My favorite number is actually uh, insurance companies who do not do that and um, the what the customers say about the insurance industry. Only 37% of our uh, consumer respondents in the survey. I'll talk about what we did in the survey in, uh, in a moment. Only 37% say they trust the insurance industry. This is, I've been doing these studies since 2007, and um, this number unfortunately is consistent. I've never had a study where we asked consumers whether they trust the insurance industry, and that number cracked 50%. Even banks, even in the uh, financial crisis of 2008, 
2009, even banks at that time were, were higher. So that's- yeah, I take this personally. <laughs> so that's, that's um, my one favorite number. My other favorite number is half a billion. Um, okay, now you have my interest. Okay, half a billion, what does that mean here? We looked at, um, as, okay, maybe I should explain a little bit about what we did in the study. We surveyed 1,000 insurance executives globally and across 35 countries, and we surveyed 9,000 insurance customers, again, globally. Um, they got some of the same questions just from um, different sides, just to, so we can make a comparison and you'll guess it, a gap analysis to see where um, where insurance executives were off in their in their opinion of what customers actually want. Yeah. Um, we asked, of course, not just what do customers want, but we asked a lot of questions around where do you invest, what kind of capabilities are you investing in, what technologies, et cetera, et cetera. We found that there was a group of insurance companies, uh, which we call the emerging concierges, because they are at the beginning of the journey, um, who invested um, about 20 times as much into customer facing, customer focused technologies as the traditional insurance companies did. So customer facing technologies means, uh, customer facing capabilities means things like um, individualized products, um, being able to, to tailor your communication and, uh, and personalize your communication with your customer, reaching customers at the point of risk, at their, their preferred touch points. These are customer focused um, capabilities. Insurance companies who actually um, are in this group of the emerging concierges that invested so much more than the others in customer facing technologies earned there comes the half a billion about half a billion per annum us dollars per annum more than the traditional insurance how does how do i get to that number i looked at growth rate and they have a they have a um, two point uh, something percent higher growth rate 2.7 i think and um they have a uh, um, uh, four per percentage points higher retention rate. Yeah. And you just need to, I mean, you can just multiply yeah. by revenue. You need to you multiply retention rate by gross written premium. And it adds up to half a billion US dollars um, per a year. Yeah, and, and what I want to say that I think the impact of that on uh, revenue and bottom line makes sense when you think about it. If you over a long period invest in customer facing digital products and services, even though if only half of them are third work, um, and when you do that over a consistent period of time, it makes total sense that you actually grow over market average. I even think we need to think, I think it's not even the limit. If I look at companies that spend even more in research and development, you know, the Apple, oh, I, share, I think I, can share, I cannot say names. Uh, so the, the big tech companies are spending like lots more money there and you see even bigger growth rates. So I think yeah. the more insurer actually invest in, um, in customer facing things that will see the effect on, on, um, on growth rates. And we here in, in Germany or in Europe, I see several cases where they grow 10, 20% actually. Uh, and they have been really the front runners of these things. So I think it's not what we say, risk concierge. It's not like a topic where like, oh, it's the next thing and we should be nice and flowers. It's hardcore business relevant. It is. And, and the, the one thing to, to, um, to say uh, just from our data, so it's not the large insurers. So because, I mean, that's the first um, suspicion you always have. Ah, oh, the large insurers are yes. investing more. No, we're talking about investment as percentage of their revenue. So that's one. So and of course, that for the larger ones, that adds up to more dollars. But just from a percentage perspective, it's across the board. And um, the they they aren't more um, of the emerging concierges within the large um, insurer group. No, it's 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 really across the board. So small insurers can be in that group, too. And uh, to what you said about um, this being um, this being a self-sustaining effect that will probably grow more over time. Um, we found um, this by asking a simple question, what are your barriers to actually implementing yeah. these types of products that, that, risk, that make a risk concierge? And um, the, um, the biggest answer for the emerging concierge group was we don't invest enough in technology. Now you, you just have to 
to, to wrap yeah, your head. I mean, it's quite obvious. If I want to send a letter once a year to my client with, you know, long text nobody understands, I haven't changed in 10 years with the premium rise in premium, or if I want to become part of the daily life of my client and increasing touch points, increasing profit, NPS, and all of that. I mean, it's like if you would compare uh, with rocket fuel uh, fueled uh, Ferrari uh, and my broken bike. I mean, it's a totally different, you know, game you're in. Uh, and I think that's the decision insurers need to make. And what I want to say is, I also see smaller and mid-sized insurers, but also some big ones who actually did their homework over the last three, four, five years. A lot of hard decision, lots of investment, and now they see the the the, the fruit in their you know actually uh, profit loss statement, and that makes me super happy. That makes me yeah. super happy because you know I could do the I told you so dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and and I mean if we've been um, I've been doing this for a long time, and we've been talking about disruption in the insurance industry since the internet came along, which yeah. um, and but. I'm, I was always skeptical about that, I have to admit, because I mean, the agent is, is, is around, still around and the agent is here to stay because let's face it, uh, you need, you trust a person more than you trust an organization. So, I mean, of course, in many instances, and especially as the face of the risk concert is going forward, an agent, an intermediary, uh, other kind of broker is valuable. But this is really the first instance where I say this might be the disruption. The change to risk concierge might be the disruption that really creates an industry of two speeds, where those that go concierge will be the ones where that win out. And then there's a, there's a rest that can actually compete on price. Yeah. And all the those in the middle will, will start to have problems. But Christian, to be quite honest, first of all, I believe, um, yes, agents are here to stay, but only the good ones, you know, the bad ones are getting under pressure and killed by the internet. The good ones, by the way, they are risk concierge, you know, because they are the bodies that say, oh, I heard, you know, you have this crane of that company, five other clients have you really big problem with the transmission, make sure to have a look at it. They are the people that actually, you know, do WhatsApp calls, mails, consulting uh, sessions or even have mail uh, things going on or go, are active on social media and sharing all the data. They try, they, the really good ones can be super analog but super risk concierge uh, even without uh, us talking about it. But you said one important thing, implementation. Let's talk. How do you actually do it except calling Christian? Okay. Um, the There's several steps you can set, take. Uh, the first one should be obvious, but isn't to most people. Basically, you need to you need to create your game plan. You need to have digital game plan, which starts with having uh, a business model that actually is fit for for um, for a uh, risk concierge, where all parts are considered. And here, this goes back to what we just discussed. Um, this considers the intermediary, this considers the underwriter, this basically considers everyone that's customer facing, but all of it from the side of the customer, because in the end, it's only the customer that matters. And I mean, we, another one of those topics, which could probably fill an hour, you've had this, those discussions, I've had those discussions, who actually is your customer, dear insurance comp uh, company? I say only the end customer is the one that matters because the, of course, the um, the the agents and brokers, they bring in money, but without the end customer, it doesn't work. So you have to build your um, digital claim pl game plan, your bi digital business model for the end customer, be it commercial, be it private. That's number one. Number two. Uh, also part of the game plan, customer experience. And here it already gets into the details because the details matter. Uh, one of the things we consistently found over the studies over the past 15 years when we asked um, customers or consumers or decision makers, be easy to do business with. And that was before we even talked about customer experience as yeah. the thing in customer centricity. Be easy to be, do uh, business with. If you're not easy to do business with, you won't never be a risk concierge. Because the, as just as you said, Robin, um, the good agents are already that way because you can go to them. They do the stuff for you. And uh, but in by the, the way, also small consulting companies focusing on the insurance industry. You know, if you come to us, can you do your magic? You know, shortly before an important date, we're like, 
happy to if we really like you. So we are also trying to do that. And I think it's a good idea in business, you know, to be fun and easy to work with. Let's not forget the large uh, consulting companies, but okay, that's <laughs> that large tech consulting companies. You mean, no? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the um, the yes, the agent will will is already um, the 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 face of the risk kind shares, but the, everything that happens behind him has to help him be, uh, be easy to do business with. Because in the end, if he doesn't earn any money or she doesn't earn any money at all. Uh, uh, from this, they will have to quit doing it because they simply can't. So the whole organization has to be easy to business with. The customer experience has to fit. Make the little tweaks to actually make customer experience happen. That's number two. Number three, build a technological foundation. Here, another topic where we can talk for hours about this. I'll mention three big paths is for the risk concierge is digital connectivity. Um, and that the, the examples that I gave you um, earlier, they were all around telematics. They were about using the smartphones. It's about being easy to do business with via technology, being easy to reach, which means it's just connectivity. Number two, uh, we're talking about scalability, which means uh, in this day and age, cloud, hybrid cloud in some form or shape, um, because just putting a, a box in your, in your um, in your um, data center, simply won't cut it anymore. So some combination of public and private probably will be the one to go. Uh, last but not least, and that's when I when I, when I mentioned uh, Snack, I talked about the, the partnerships, the ecosystem that they have. Partnerships and ecosystems are an important foundation for the risk concierge because let's go back to the hotel. Um, she well, she asked you what you want to do for for the evening. Um, then it's hotel. It, it's um, it's a play. It's a it's this um, it's a musical. It's a restaurant. It's whatever a gallery. And then she calls that up, and that's that's the ecosystem. Because without the ecosystem where you can actually do stuff, the services the concierge is useless. Similar risk concierge. If you consider uh, risk advice, risk consultation, etc., as embedded in daily life, then you need all of those um, those partnerships, those ecosystems around it to really make that work. Yeah, so what I really think it's important that risk concierge, or generally, I think it's not a strategic wise move for insurers to really go into the uh, help you book a ticket for a family, like you know the big credit card companies with the black cards. I think that's not game changer game changer is to really help people with our knowledge, core knowledge of risk, health, financial well-being, physical well-being, spiritual well-being. I think these are all topics insurers can do a lot. By the way, we also have the data in a lot of cases. Um, maybe not, you know, we have a lot of data there. Um, so I think, um, and by the way, if you look, if I look at my past as an insurance salesperson, funnily enough, the most business I did, by the way, also didn't change uh, with um, our small business we have here, with clients with whom I have a lot of contact, with I have a lot of contact points, maybe digital, maybe non-digital, um, or people that you help along the way. You know, maybe you uh, on a Friday afternoon you gave them a new license plate for their new car very quickly, and then you know on Monday they were there and said, "Oh, don't you want to actually look at all my insurance policies?" By the way, of the competitor. So I think the idea to increase touch points with your clients and leads that that leads to business. I would urge every decision maker out there, remember your own days in the, in the sales force or ask your sales guys. I'm pretty sure they will confirm if you increase touch points and are nice to the people, this will lead to business sooner or later. <laughs> you know, this is, I'm, I'm laughing here. You're, you're completely right. I was just thinking of a study we did back 11 years ago um, where for the first time we actually, we, we looked at insurance channels, but we didn't call them channels. We called them uh, touch points. And that was kind of caused kind of a stir because at that point in time, it was channels. It was push. It was going outwards. It wasn't about customer touching you. It was really about you selling something to customers. And this is just, just shows you, this is a short 11 years uh, from 2010, how the world has changed since then. And um, it's, it's, it's highly fascinating. 
fascinating highly it also was to talk to you half an hour already over thank you very much for a being here everybody out there sharing commenting don't hesitate to ask a question there don't hesitate to uh, push the like button to show the algorithm that you love this topic and of course christian D. robin one last um, oh sorry christian one last question to you um is there anything the insurance community can do for you Anything that you can share? Yes, of course. You can download the study, and um, Robin, I'm sure you will be um, posting the link uh, yeah. right um, after I say this. And um, you can contact me, and you can, uh, you can, we can have a discussion. Um, I love pushback, so if you disagree with anything, I want to hear that too. And uh, let's just get into communication. Let's get into discussion. Thank you very much, uh, and don't forget to you know tune in with our next show, and we will be there for sure. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and uh, yeah, have a great day.